Hey everyone, welcome back to this tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to continue with uh, the torch uh, demo that I had shown in part one. Um, and this video is going to specifically just talk about how to get something rendered um, in Karma. Um, just a quick note, I am using 19.5 for this, um, just because 20 is having some stability problems. So some of the nodes may be a little bit different. Um, if they are, just leave me a comment and I can help you through that. Um, so let's head over to Houdini and get started. So here we are. Um, this is the same setup that I had in the previous file. Um, got torch model here. And then this is the geo that's prepped. Just a bunch of blasts on FBX files. Um, this is a simulation that I walked you through last time. Um, we've got some nulls here that I set up before. So there's an outfire, the torch geo, um, and some embers, um, which I'm going to talk about in a different video. Um, so let's head over to the stage, which is where we're going to render things and take a look at what I've got set up here. So basically, if you look at these, these are just SOP imports. Um, I'm not going to go over creating every single one of these nodes because there's just too much information to go over. Um, but if you want to bring in geometry into um, into the stage, you just do a SOP import and you basically go find the SOP path. You can see those out nodes are listed here. And that's all I've done um, for these. So I've got a fire one, the torch geo, which I've just got in three, into three separate nodes. Um, you can see each one of these has an import group associated with it. Um, and those groups are set up in back at uh, object level. Um, next up, we've got some materials. Uh, again, simple as just making a material library node um, and diving into it and making a material. Um, I could have done this all in one node. I just went ahead and just did this just for simplicity's sake. So. Um, for this torch geo here is the cloth. You can see I've got a principal shader set up. Um, to, to make a principal shader, again, it's very simple, principal shader. Um, and this shader kind of works like an Unreal or something like that, where basically all you're doing is just pointing to the texture paths um, of your textures. Same as Unreal, Substance Painter, Maya, all those. Um, and there's lots of information about this online about the principal shader. Um, but most importantly, what we want to really look at is the fire geo, um, which is right here. So this is a bit different. So basically, um, in your material library, if you go in and you look up pyro shader, it's right here. Um, and this is where kind of all the action happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a new one here just to kind of walk you through it a little bit. So let's just delete this one. And you can see this is what you'll get kind of by default uh, in, uh, in Solaris. So if I just type in pyro shader, you can see we're going to get this. Um, the reason why uh, there nothing is happening is this isn't assigned. So if I just click and drag and then just select set material on SOP1 component and I select that, that's going to give it a material assignment. And I go back in here to, to our material. Um, so it's been assigned. So you can see right now, by default, all we have is smoke. If I uncheck that, we have nothing. So smoke is just as you would think. Um, density scale means more smoke. And remember, this is just at shader level. Um, so Pyra is kind of weird. Like you have your, your main simulation, plus this is like the texturing part um, of, of your Pyro simulation. So in here, we can do all kinds of stuff to the look without actually simulating, which is really cool. Um, so we want fire. So if I enable fire, we get this. Um, obviously, this is a lot of fire. <laughs> um, so we want to first kind of deal with this intensity scale. So if I bring this down, 
you'll see it, it kind of starts to diminish a little bit but I still want those hot spots and I don't want this the fire to, to go up as high to travel as high so what I can do under this fire intensity ramp is I can just slide these sliders over it's very easy to do this and then now if I just shift click those little nodes I can kind of dial in the look so say we go something more like this and let's go back in time a little bit and here it's just tweaking so I'm just going to tweak this a little bit give it a little bit more fire and then I'm going to bring that intensity scale back up now you can see we're getting intense spots in the fire but it's not traveling as high so let's go to about there and that looks good and that's about it I mean obviously you can tweak this to whatever kind of fire you want um, but obviously this is torch fire looks very realistic it's gonna render fast and it's as simple as that so if we go back out to our, uh, our tree here so I'm just merging all of these sops together um, again there's some materials and then we've got a camera just a generic light and then the karma render settings so if we go up here and we go into our karma render settings let's talk about these a little bit so these are the settings that I've used for this fire um, so under rendering sampling you can see secondary I've got this set to 8 and 16 again you feel free to dial these however you want you may want more you may want less um, it depends on what your system can handle um, and then under filters I'm using the Nvidia optics denoiser um, and, and then all you have to do to render is get rid of this USD render up, hook that up, and you're good to go. Render to disk, um, render current frames, specific grains, just how you normally would render uh, inside of Houdini. Very simple. Um, and that's it. Uh, or you could also render to M play as well. Um, so thanks a lot for this overview. Uh, like I said, if, if any of this stuff doesn't isn't familiar, reach out in the comments. Um, I figured it was a, a much better use of time just going through the pyro shader than than going through and setting up all these generic nodes that you should know how to, to set up already and if not there's lots of beginner usd tutorials out there um, thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial